Hello buddy, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, Warmer 2, quick match gameplay. This time around we are on the Mortis Wastes, playing as the forces of Brave Bretonia against the Filthy Beastmen. And for this build I wanted to try out something a little silly and something not usual for me. Well, yeah, I've been doing campaign, uh, a bit of co-op, Empire, and uh, Bretonia. And I've been getting to use a good old King Louis Pegasus Knights quite a bit, and <laughs> it made me want to try them out. These units have obviously been buffed and reworked and changed a whole bunch over the last two patches. Uh, they've gained mass, Pegasus Knights have gone down in cost, a few stat tweaks here and there uh, to hopefully make them a more viable unit. And I figured, you know what, why not give them a shake? Why not try them out? Uh, they do have quite a few advantages. Uh, they're obviously anti-large, they've got decent stats. Um, not the great in sustained melee, but obviously they can they can avoid the enemy charge because they're a flying unit. And uh, pretty flexible and all that sort of stuff. So I figured, you know what, why not give them a shot? And what better faction to try them against than Beastmen who don't have much armor to begin with, with the single exception of Vestigors. And plus being able to sort of isolate and pick off individual cavalry would be a huge boon. So regardless, going over this build, for my lord, I did decide to roll with the Fan Chantress. Uh, you obviously want Lore of Life with a lot of cavalry, and uh, she provides that. So we've got Earthblood, we've got Regrowth, we do have the Mist of the Lady, we've got Life Bloom, Chalice of Potions, Favor of the Fae, and Arcane Conduit. So the full lineup. For our main line here, it is simply three units of Spearmen at Arms, <laughs> because we needed some width. Two Foot Squires, hopefully with Vestigors, and then this Holy Wardens of all my Tal in the center to bog down my opponent and buy me some time, because these guys with their monstrous leadership will not really break. For the rest of the build, we do have two mounted yeoman archers to zone away any centaurs with throwing axes. And then a big old air core. We've got the single unit of Pegasus Knights over here. Two units of Royal Pegasus Knights over here. These guys, of course, have immunity to vigor and 20% uh, physical resist, which is pretty cool. And immune psychology and all that sort of stuff. And then Royal Hippogriff Knights over here to provide some fear and terror, which Beastmen really don't like. For my opponent, he decided to go with a very wide infantry-centric build. For his Lord Morgor Shadow Gave. Uh, there's not much to say there. He's got both of his he's got both of his uh, chaos spawn summons as well as call of violence. Uh, no foe seekers, but definitely he's going to be able to rally his troops a good bit and provide some annoying support and potentially overwhelm my infantry line very quickly. For the front line, it has a mix of gore and ungore herd. Uh, the ungores, of course, were invisible early on. They do have stalk, uh, as as do I do believe uh, some of the gore herd. The black horned ravager were stalked and vanguarded over there, uh, but the front line mostly gore herd with shields. And on Gores, backed up by two units of Bestigors, one of them the Korok's Manorpers over here, providing a small AP contingent. And then we do have two Minotaurs with great weapons. These are a popular pick in this matchup. Personally, I prefer the Shielded variant for the additional melee defense, as well as the protection against missiles, because Bretonian can shoot you down quite a bit, uh, but they will definitely be a potent force against my Cav. There is a Brave Shaman of Shadows over on the flank, providing some Melkos Miasma, Enfeebling Foe, and Penumbral Pendulum. And then we do have the Dressrose Dracul back here, providing a little bit of anti-large. So regardless, Lion's moving into clo uh, moving in pretty quickly. I didn't know my opponent had this unit back there, but I didn't make sure to check all the corners first. Uh, you can see the uh, Master Yeoman there, firing into the Gorehood. And this is actually a bit of a current bug or bad mechanic. If you order a unit, a skirmish unit, to fire on on it, uh, or a skirmish unit with fire at, at will uh, to attack a unit, and I order it to attack the Minotaurs, it will actually fire at whatever is closest. It will behave as if it was not turned off fire or turned on fire will, so uh, or off fire will. So, unfortunately, my guys here are wasting ammo on the Gorehood despite being turned off fire will, and uh, that does mean they wasted a good chunk of ammo there. That said, Fane Chantress diving into the Gungor Herds, bogging them down, and draining their HP almost immediately. The Wardens of the Mice and Tal pushing through. In the meantime, the Foot Squires are going to clash here. And because the, spear, the Spears are going to absorb the Gore Charge, it does mean the Foot Squires are going to get a pretty advantageous fight. The Holy Wardens will as well. And in the meantime, we are going to dive on the Minotaurs. Despite the fact they're on the, the Destroyers of Drakwald, we are going to go in, going straight for the throat, and just piling in on these Minotaurs. And of course, with their very low armor, only 35, they've only got... 20 or 30 some, 32 melee defense, they are going to get melted. And you can see it happens incredibly quickly there. In the meantime, the mounted yeomen swing around the flank looking to get pot shots into these minotaurs. And you can see just that annihilation going down. Pegasus Knights lose a single model, and the minotaurs are off the field. 10 models completely massacred. And before the second unit of minotaurs can really make contact, we are going to pull away. And uh, they actually get slashed out a little bit by the Penumbral Pendulum, which is basically nothing. It's not really meant against Cav. Uh, but minotaur unit already shattered. Destroyers of Drakwald basically destroyed. And uh, in the meantime, my opponent has been forced to reposition his Korok's Manor, reposition his Minotaurs with Great Weapons, trying to intercept me. Uh, and it's not really working out all that well. You can see the Holy Wardens here pushing out to intercept and tie these guys down. In the meantime, the Fane Chantress swings in this way and starts melting the Bestigors, which is really critical. The Bestigors cannot be allowed to survive. They're probably the most dangerous unit here. And they really do need to go. 
Over here in the meantime, the Flying Air Corps of Bretonia is going to dive in once more. And you can see, we're fighting on top of Korax Man Rippers, but we're just ignoring that. We've got enough HP per model to not have to care too much. And we're trying to snipe out the Minotaurs with Great Weapons. Remove these big monsters from play and open up the future ability to cycle charge and dominate my opponent once my infantry lines are gone. In the meantime, the Mounted Yeomen here are going to try to get a charge in on the Ungor Herd and kind of flop. I expected them to rout them almost immediately, and uh, they held a lot better than I anticipated. That said, Minotaurs get completely dumpstered and shoved in the trash, and you can see they're dropping HP incredibly quickly there. Uh, the Foot Squires here dropping in HP, falling apart, and uh, unfortunately, Morgor was close enough to get the Chaos Bond summoned off, and this is going to be disastrous because the Fae was in amongst her own troops there. I thought she'd be holding up okay, and now she's going to get bogged down. She's getting blocked by all these units, hit by Melkos Miasma, and she's not able to extricate herself. And... I'm using my knights to clear up the periphery, but I really don't want my knights getting tied down in here in this pit fight. And the, my opponent has actually own, hasn't used both of his chaos pawn. He's only gotten this one chaos pawn off, and uh, so that's still a bit of a threat. In the time the holy wardens here slugging it out with the bray shaman and some of the gore herd, doing a bit of damage, obviously, definitely doing their people proud, but uh, not going to be super decisive. In the time the mounted yeomen here chipping away and trying to whittle down, most importantly, the Korox manor prison. You can see we're going to launch a charge against them because I figured these guys are the most important unit. Fan Chantress is going to get one more earth blood in before she is going to be completely destroyed. Unfortunately, the mass here is just ridiculous. Uh, this was actually really, really crappy. But the Fan Chantress just got bogged down, couldn't get past the Gal spawn, who just kept surrounding her. And I don't even think my opponent was actively trying to surround her. It was just unfortunate uh, situation and so she's gonna get bogged down here she has nowhere to flee and she's actually gonna get cut down which sucks that said we did really beat up the Korok's man rippers actually forced a route because with terror and now the flying air corps is gonna shift away and they're gonna start slaughtering these returning beastmen troops you can see the ungors here completely gonna buckle with hippogriffs in there there's not much to say they can't really hold up the best of as well getting intercepted and fortunately the royal hippos still pretty healthy they actually got hit by a favor of the fey before the fey enchantress got down went got downed my opponent here making a bit of a misplay, allowing his Minotaurs to overextend, and in we go, and the Minotaurs are going to get dumpstered by the Pegasus Knights. The Pegasus Knights are doing so much damage on the charge. They do have, keep in mind, 61 weapon strength, so 61 with a bonus for a charge of, well, right now we're getting poisoned by, I think, Morgur or the Chaos Spawn, but a bonus for a charge of 12, so not bad. Even Pegasus Knights have a bonus for a charge of 10, so there's a significant bonus for a charge there, and we're just able to annihilate the Minotaurs. Uh, and in the meantime, the uh, Holy Wardens continuing to pepper in, and uh, obviously they're not going to be doing the, uh, or sorry, not the Holy Wardens, the Wardens of Monfort. Uh, they're uh, peppering in their shots, doing some damage. Not the most amazing output ever, but they are going to whittle down these Korok's Manor a good bit. And this is really the last unit my opponent has that's a major threat. And at this point, I'm kind of waiting for the Chaos Bond to be removed. I'm picking off the fleeing troops, forcing them off the map, um, and trying to rally the small remaining vestiges of my infantry. You can see there's the Holy Wardens here on 50 models. The Foot Squires over there on, like, 16. Um... But we're trying to get picks on the flanks. Uh, you can see we're going to dive in here on the Korok's Man Rippers. Their bracing doesn't help because they're standing still but facing the wrong direction. Uh, so we get a nice little charge here. And this is all another reason where the Royal Pegasus Knights, obviously much like Grail Knights, are going to start getting much more effective. Because they are, at this point, my opponent, uh, very tired on all of his troops. And probably, perhaps even exhausted on some at this point. Actually, the, the Black Horns Ravagers are still fresh. And in case you're wondering why, it's because they do have the Rowdy trait. This is the same trait that Centicores have. It's in perfect vigor as long as their leadership is good. But because of the, the vigor is now failing, we're able to remove the Korok's Man Rippers from play. And we're able to just pulverize this pocket of infantry. And really, the only things holding at this point are Morgur, the Caster, and the Korok's Man, or the Black Horns Ravagers. Because everything else now is falling apart. Their leadership is low. They're all exhausted or very tired. They're not able to stand their ground uh, and we're kind of dumpstering them unfortunately though my opponent does pull things back a little bit here get some chaos spawn looking to pen me in and we're forced to pull out but at this stage of the game you can't see this full route not all these units sh shattered or uh, broken some of them are just terror routed like the Bray shaman but we are going to be able to pick them apart now as they flee and my opponent doesn't have the troops left to really protect himself uh, he's gonna cast a Melkos Miasma on the Pegasus Knights but honestly the damage is going to be negligible because there's only 17 models there to begin with. And the slow isn't going to keep them from running things down. So it's basically, they're just going to pick apart these gores. You can see doing a lot of damage there. Just an absolute menace to society, picking apart the peripheral troops. Um, obviously, we're kind of stalling the game here a little bit uh, because we're just trying to run these troops off. But it's very important in the late stage of the game. The game is still very much in the balance. Potentially, if I get bogged down in an extended fight... Morgor is still very healthy. The Black Horns Ravagers are still pretty healthy. And do keep in mind, most of these troops do not have the most amazing armor ever. So you really want to clean up the, your other angles and try to pin things down. Now, a bit of a misplay here on my part. 
I, instead of pursuing this unit off the field and wiping them out, I'm going to charge it with my Pe Pegasus Knights and all of my Wardens of Monfort and, wooden, and Mounted Yeoman Archers. And this is actually a big misplay. Because right now, if my opponent kills, shatters, breaks these troops, breaks these Wardens of Monfort, I'm no longer going to be able to charge, cycle charge with my air cav. I'm going to be forced to stand and fight. And that's something I still like to avoid. Fortunately, though, these Chaos Bond are going to be removed to play. They do disintegrate. In the meantime, our aircraft is still doing absolutely monstrous work, picking apart about half these Black Orange Ravagers, and reducing my opponent to just the last scraps, the last dregs of his force. And uh, at this point, it is going to be a little bit of cycle charge action. We are going to sort of hit this peripheral troops, these Gore Herd, remove them from play. Um, the <laughs> Mountain Diamond Archers there coming back in to pepper down the Black Orange Ravagers a little bit. We dive in. We're using our superior mobility to pick apart this blob. Get rid of these black one ravagers. Call the violence does go in, but it just doesn't matter. We'll remove everything from play. Uh, poor Morgor is going to now get fought by the royal hippogriffs, who just kind of punt away those poor, uh, those poor war herds there. And they're going to surround Morgor. And here, the filthy beast is going to be surrounded by these uh, majestic bird horses of Bretonia. And uh, he's going to get cut down pretty effectively. Uh, these guys do 100 plus damage, I swing. Morgor doesn't have much in the way of armor, so they're hitting pretty consistently. Even with poison, they're going to be doing boatloads of damage. And Morgor's leadership is, at this point, too fragile, and he's going to buckle. So, a pretty close game, though I think the ending was a lot more decisive than uh, perhaps the balance of power showed up until the end. Uh, honestly, air cap's not bad. So, I think that against certain factions, you don't want to go the air cap route. Because... A lot, some factions will be able to deal with your air calf pretty efficiently. Um, now, the, uh, I, I, the main thing is that against Beastmen, especially against a build like this, my opponent had nothing to prevent me from taking off. Uh, once I dove in, I killed the unit of Minotaurs, and then I could promptly waddle out on my horse, on my Hippogriffs, on my Pegasus, or my Pegasi, and just bail out. And I didn't have to give a damn. Which is really nifty. Um, and honestly, had I been a little more aware of my surroundings, a little more, a bit more uh, quick about moving, a little quicker about moving my Fane Chantress out of danger, this battle would have probably been much more decisively in my favor. I could have simply pulled Fae out, um, lost all my infantry, but who really cares? And I would have been left with a very potent force of cavalry, air cav. Um, against lightly armored targets, the air cav does amazing work. They can really munch through the minotaurs. You saw what they did to them. Uh, obviously, the Royal Hippogriffs are a whole other story. I think they're really competitive in a lot of matchups, but. You know, I guess it's nice to be proud. They, they, you don't have to worry about enemy charging you, at least not initially. If you if you dive in on a unit, they are not going to get a counter charge. So you can essentially negate a lot of damage, especially on shock calf. Uh, obviously, if you go in against something like Demigriff Knights with Halberds, you can have a bad day. Uh, I do believe Royal Pegasus Knights still lose to Demigriff Halberds, and pretty badly at that. I think the, the Demigriffs kind of crump them over the head and show them who's boss. But against most other cavalry, you will do rather well with them. Uh, Royal Pegasus Knights, I think they beat Reichsguard and those sorts of units, so they're not bad. Or sorry, normal Pegasus Knights. Uh, and here against Beastmen, who don't have much in the way of armor, it's really pretty devastating. And you still have a little bit of AP with the Hippogriffs. Uh, but the nice thing is that Pegasus Knights are cheaper. They do more damage on a burst than Royal Hippogriffs do. Royal Hippogriffs only have six models, and chances are not all those models are going to be making connection. Uh, whereas with, with Pegasus Knights, you've generally got more models making the connection, even if not all of them are making it, if that makes sense. Um, so again, especially lightly armored targets, you can get a lot of value, and especially in late game, where their perfect vigor is really kicking in. Uh, my Royal Hippogriffs were very tired um, in the late game, and uh, the Pegasus Knights were not. So that's just one of those fun things. Uh, otherwise, well... I think the Pegasus Knights are in an okay spot. I'm, I'm trying to think of what matches that you'd really want to bring in them. I think Beastmen is one where it's very viable. One, you're going to be much more resistant to Cygore shots, which are a pretty common sight in this matchup on, for good or ill. You're often going to see Cygores in the Beastmen matchup. Uh, they're very strong against Minotaurs, and they're pretty good, uh, and I'd say they're better at getting away from be Bestigors than uh, normal Knights are. So that, I think that's a big edge there. Uh, and they will obviously dumpster centigors and those sorts of units. And potentially they can even catch centigors with throwing axes because they do have the speed for it. They've got 105 speed, which is actually edges out those units, which is pretty nice. Um, so I think that's my own match where they're viable. Otherwise, it's more limited. Um, you could try to use them against high elves. I don't think it's and wood elves and those sorts of and those sorts of factions. But I don't really think it's as useful there. Um, the simple fact of the matter is, wood elves are going to shoot you down. And you're better off with cheaper calf, in my opinion. Uh, plus, if the Wood Elf decides to go with an air-heavy build, and you haven't gone all in on air, but which you probably don't want to do, then you're going to get dumpstered. 
Against High Elves, I think it's a little more viable, but you do have to be wary of wide builds, and I think Grail Knights are just so stupidly powerful in that matchup that it's like, do you really want to trade Royal Pegasus Knights for that? Especially given that Grail Knights are so good against Phoenix Guard boxes. Uh, I'm trying to think what other matches there might be. Well, they could perform rather well. I don't like them in Vampire Counts, because Vampire Counts will just... If they don't go air heavy, essentially, Vampire Counts are going to mess you up on the ground, because they'll have Blood Knights and Zombie Summons, and you're going to get wrecked. Uh, Empire, if they... I think Royal Hippos are good there, but Pegasus Knights not so much because they can't really do much to Demi's. Uh, but I think they do have a, they do have a little niche here. They, against Greenskins, I could see them being decent because you could pick off Boar Boys and those sorts of troops very efficiently. Uh, lightly Armored Cav like that, of course, being very vulnerable. Against, um, perhaps against Bretonia in a mirror matchup, it wouldn't be bad. Uh, I wouldn't say against Lizards. Maybe it's okay against Tomb Kings. If you bring, like, Lewin and debuff them a whole bunch, it could be decent. Uh, Skaven, probably not, because they have Daka. Uh, Norska, they could also be decent, I think. So I think there are a few niche matchups now where you can make them work. I still, I'm not convinced they're better than Grail Knights. I still don't think they're really what you want to be bringing in most matches, but I do think there's a little bit of a niche for them. And I think if you're willing to be a little innovative with your tactics and, uh, be clever with your cycle charging you, and isolating of troops, they can be very potent for So... Sorry for the ranty ending here, but I didn't want to sort of discuss the potential uses of Pegasus Knights and uh, highlight them a little bit. And I did have fun using them in this match, and I think they are a pretty entertaining and potentially much more decent unit now than they were previously. So definitely be sure to give them a shake. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, if you found it entertaining, informative, any of that sort of stuff, be sure to uh, leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. If you have any comments, any criticism, any questions... Any requests, as usual, don't hesitate to put them down below, and I will do my very best to respond as soon as I can. As usual, I do thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye for now.